This is MathGuide.com, and my name is Mark Karadimos. In this video, we're going to look at probability problems as they apply to rolling dice. In our first section, we're going to talk about the definition of probability. In the remaining four sections, we're going to do a problem in each. Let's get started. In order to do probability problems, it's necessary to know what the definition is. The definition of probability is the number of favorable outcomes divided by the total number of outcomes. Now this formula may seem a bit odd, but as we roll through the following four problems, it'll become much more clear as to how it's used and how it's used for other types of dice problems and other types of probability problems. All right, let's use it. So before we begin our first problem, let's first also make sure we declare that we're rolling two six-sided dice. In other words, two standard dice. When, we, when people think rolling a die, they think these six-sided dice that come up in a variety of games. Uh, so you'll see that I've got a table on the right side. And on this table, you can see there's a bunch of numbers, and you can see there's pairs of numbers in each little uh, rectangle there. Uh, so what does it represent? So picture the blue die uh, is being rolled on the left side of the table, and then the green die is represented by rolls at the top end of the table. So, for instance, an element within this table would be, hey, this is a, a 4 on the blue die, and then a, a 4 on the green die. What does this represent? This represents a 5 on the blue die and a 4 on the green die, and so on. So the first roll is the blue die, and the second roll is the green die. Okay, being that that's the case, we're going to use this table because it lists all the possible outcomes. And yes, there are 36 possible outcomes, which corresponds with the fundamental counting principle. If I've got six outcomes for one die, six outcomes for the other die, taken together, six times six, yep, there's 36 combinations. There are six columns and six rows. Okay, anyway, I know that there's 36 outcomes. So now let's use this table to do a problem. So let's figure out what is the probability of rolling a single three. And this is how it's usually written. You've got some event declared here within the parentheses and the P of course stands for probability. So it's read, what is the probability of rolling a single three? So let's look at the table and read it. So I only want a single three. So when they say a single three, Hmm, let's list all the ones that have a three. So let's see, uh, here are a bunch of threes. Okay, so I can look at this particular uh, row, and then I'd say, hey, there's threes in this column. So that means I've got a whole bunch. I've got six in this column, I've got six in this column, and then people think, hey, there's 12 possible ways, and nope. It says, if you read this carefully, what is the probability of rolling a single three? So that means that we cannot count this as a possible favorable outcome. And the reason why we cannot count that one as a favorable outcome is that there's two threes rolled. I only want a single three. Okay, so if we only count up the available ones, we could see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's 10 ways that I could roll a single three. All right, and let's see, how many outcomes are there possible? There's 36 outcomes total. And of course, this is a fantastic answer, uh, but we could write this as a reduced fraction. So I could divide the top by two, I could divide the bottom by two. I get 5 eighteenths. That's of course written as a fraction or a ratio. I can also write it as a percent and decimal if I so choose. So the calculator says 0.277 and there's a bunch of course repeating sevens. 
Now, of course, if we round this, we could say that this is 27.8%. Okay, so we have our answer written in a variety of ways. Okay, let's try a different problem. All right, here's our second problem. So what is the probability of not rolling doubles? Now, doubles mean when you roll the same number twice. Like if you roll two ones, two twos, two threes, two fours, two fives, two sixes. Those are doubles. And doubles are represented along the diagonal. So you can see that these are doubles. Now, if I want to count all the ways of not rolling doubles, well, think of it this way. There are six ways of rolling doubles. I know there's 36 possible outcomes, so I'm going to put 36 as my denominator. So if I know that there's six outcomes that are bad, that means there's got to be 30 that are good. So in other words, if I don't count these one, two, three, four, five, six outcomes, there must be 30 that are left in this table. Okay, so what is this probability? Well, we could leave it like that, but I'd rather reduce this. So if I divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2, I could divide the top by 3 and the bottom by 3. I get 5 6. So 5 6 is a possible answer. I could always divide this with the calculator. I get 0.833 repeating threes. So I could, I could write it as a decimal value as my probability, or I could move the decimal two places over and call this roughly 83.3%. So any one of those are, any one of these three are perfectly great ways to respond to this problem. Fraction, decimal, or percent. Let's go on to our third problem. Here's our third problem. Now you'll notice that the table changed there to the right. No longer will you see pairs of numbers for each of these elements within the table. Yes, there's still 36 values in this table, right? Six columns, six rows, there's 36 elements. However, you'll notice that there's just a single number now in each of these rectangles. So what does they what, what do they represent? They represent the sum. So in other words, if I rolled a 5 on the blue die and I rolled a 6 on the green die, the sum of the two dice would be 11. Okay, and that's done for all of them. So a 2 on the blue, a 3 on the green, that's a sum of 5. So you can see I now have 36 different sum values written in this table because our next problem deals with the sum. Okay, so let's take a look and figure out how this problem is done. Let's figure out what is the probability of rolling a sum that's greater than 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this table and we're going to decide what are or where in this table are all the sums greater than 5. So you'll notice that here are all the sums that are equal to 5. You can see this diagonal that runs up to the right. So I want to know where are all the sums that are greater than 5. Well, you can see that's everything that's below this diagonal line. Okay, so now what I want to do is count how many different boxes are there below this line. In other words, I want to count the boxes that only have, I should say the rectangles, that only have a 6 or greater in them. So, okay, let's count them. So let's say I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. There's 26 ways I could roll a sum that's greater than 5. Okay, so I start out by putting the favorable outcomes. Those are the outcomes that are greater than 5. And there's 36 total ways of rolling two dice. Okay, so let's reduce. If I divide the top by 2, if I divide the bottom by 2, I get 13 eighteenths. If I take a calculator and I divide them, I get 0.7 repeating 2s. 
Or I could, of course, move the decimal two places over and write this as a percent. I got 72.2%. Let's try another one, our last problem. Here's our fourth problem. We're going to figure out what's the probability of rolling a sum that's greater than 4 but less than 10. In other words, what are all the sums that are between 4 and 10 but, of course, not including 4 and 10? So, again, you could see where the sums are equal to 4. You could see that there's these three values. Where's the sums that are equal to 10? Well, you got these three values. But I want to be less than 10 but greater than 4. So there's the band that's between these two parallel diagonal lines. So I want to count all the possible outcomes that are between the parallel lines. Okay, so if I were to count them, I get, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Okay, so if there's 25 sums that are between 4 and 10, but not including 4 and 10 out of 36 total. All right, so you cannot reduce this. So now what we're going to do is divide this with a calculator. So I'm getting point six nine, and then repeating fours. Or I could then move over the decimal two places and get almost 70%, that's 69.4%. So there's a 69.4% chance that when I roll two dice that the sum will be between 4 and 10, not including 4 and 10. So this has been MathGuy.com. Make sure you go back to our website. Check out our more than 200 videos, our interactive quizzes, and our text-based lessons. Take care.